It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robbing Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obucha and it's great to be here on a very wet Sunday here in Lagos. Um, it's day 83. That's 83 days since over 200 girls were abducted from the government secondary school in Chibok. The girls are still not back. 83 days. 83. Security-wise, I don't know that we're making a lot of progress yet, um, especially with rescuing these girls. Um, also, throughout the past week, there were a couple of attacks across parts of Nigeria as usual, which has become sort of a norm now to almost go through a week and have an attack every day. We did hear about something happening, I think, in the early hours of Monday, or sorry, Tuesday, um, in Medugri, in a market where about 18 people ended up dying. Um, there was uh, an attack in a mosque in Konduga, I think that was on Friday, about three or four people died. There was an attack in the markets in Kaduna. Thankfully, nobody, no lives were lost, I think, but there were a lot of casualties. So the bombings are still going on, but, um, and it looks like we are still saying the same things every week that we come here. Mr. President, as usual, has been very quiet in the past week. Politics, as usual, like I said, is taking over the scene. Ekiti is still in the air. You know, it's, there's a lot of distractions, if I may use that word, and security seems to still be taking the back seat. Um, we did have a bit of an incident in Lagos over the week that was pretty weird. I think that's the word I'd use. Um, allegedly, the Nigerian military they did uh, have an issue with uh, BRT bus drivers, and there was an attack uh, on, on the road, in the Kurudu road. Buses ended up being burnt. Eyewitnesses allegedly said that it was done by the Nigerian military. The military has given out a statement saying they were not the ones that thugs took over the scene. So it, it gives a lot of people concerns when you hear, you know, the military sadly, I, I mean, associated with stories like this, whether it's true or not, it just begs the question. I mean, this is the time when we need them to be the most professional that they can be. And um, it's not a very, very interesting, you know, report to, to get at this time, especially in a in part of Nigeria where people will think that, okay, this, I mean, <laughs> without necessarily trying to draw lines, um, the military should basically just step up and hopefully give us results is all we ask for. But to be fair to them, um, we did hear some good news in, in, in the week that was with regards to security. Um, first of all, we did hear about an arrest of a certain Babaji, Babuji Yari. Um, apparently he was a key member, uh, one of those who abducted these girls. Apparently he was very key to that uh, abduction. And um, we hear he has been arrested. Hopefully the Department of um, Security would help hopefully get, you know, some answers from him and we get a headway with that. We also heard about arrest of three women who were key informants of Boko Haram. One of them, Hafsat Usman Bako, is a widow of a former Boko Haram member. Um, they were key informants, like I said, uh, of the terrorist group and hopefully the arrest will lead to even more information that, you know, the Nigerian security operatives will need to go forward. We also heard yesterday uh, about uh, 53 members of Boko Haram, we don't know how true this is, in a place called Damboa in Borno State. Uh, about 53 of them were killed by the Nigerian military. So uh, as much as we like to always uh, you know, beat the Nigerian military down, it looks like at least they're making some headway with a few arrests and hopefully they stay alive and they get to give us uh, some information. At least we need to find out. And it makes start making a headway. I always say that, uh, but it looks like every week we come back here and say the same things. So we hope that by the time we're here again next week, we would have even more good news for you. Well, away from security, it's time to talk about the Super Eagles. Uh, the last time I was here, the Super Eagles were still in the competition, but unfortunately now their run has come to an end once again in the round of 16. It looks like that's, that's all we can ever get to, to do. But they, they did play well. A lot of Nigerians are proud of them. I'm still very, very hurt by how they were kicked out of the competition, especially seeing that um, so many red cards that should have been issued to the French team ended up not being issued, and I think that's what cost us. But kudos to the Nigerian Super Eagles. Unfortunately, a lot more drama has now come out since their ouster. Um, the coach, Stephen Keshi, has said he's not going to continue. Um, the NFF has its own drama now. Um, the NFF uh, Secretary General was arrested and has been released, and then the courts kicked him out, and then the General Assembly of the, National, of the Nigerian Football Federation also kicked him out. And now FIFA has written a letter to say that they might be sanctioning us or banning us. So there's all of that drama. We don't know who's going to be the next coach. I think that's a big question because the Nations Cup qualifiers are going to be starting pretty soon. Um, it looks like 1990 all over again. I mean, we seem to say this every single time with the Nigerian football organization where after every competition, there's always all of this drama. I mean, we heard about the drama with the players and their funds. So get your acts together, please, and uh, let Nigerian football move forward. We're going to take a very quick break now and be right back with more right here on Robin Minds. Please stay. Just give me some reaction. Just
Welcome back. Now, last year, Nigerians went through what was probably one of the longest strikes that the Academic Staff Union of Universities had gone through. And after about six or seven months, students eventually went back to school. But a lot of people don't know that the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics have been at home. Some of them since April 2013, but majority of them since September. That's about 10 months that they've been at home for. And nobody seems to be giving any answers it looks like there's even no way they're going to be going back anytime soon but i have two people here in the house who are going to be talking about all of these issues that even understand why they're still at home what the demands are and if there's any hope at all um abdul karim yusuf tell me talk about thanks for being here today thank sug you. president last right, thank you Matthew. and of course babajide salvado sug president yabatek thank thanks for being here today You're now let's start with you Yusuf. what what is what is, what is the problem why are polytechnics at home all right Thank you very much. Um, of course, we would believe um, that the importance of Polytechnic in the nation should be emphasized for the fact that education plays a vital role in the development of a nation. And as such, there is the need for the government to actually concentrate in such sector. Yeah. And as it is, the government, it looks as if the government have actually neglected the polytechnics. Let's be direct now. The government have actually neglected the polytechnic such that the infrastructure that are there are not modern. Then the lecturers are not being catered for as expected. As well, the discrimination, most importantly, that is affecting the student that is happening within the BSc and the HND, of which would want that to be breached. And this is the major reason yeah. why the strike is on. So it's the st academic staff that are on strike. But the students are in support of this? Yes. Well, the students are in support because the uh, majority of all these demands affect the students directly. Yeah. Now, um, we have a 13-point agenda highlighted by the ASUP. The major key one, uh, is, uh, the key one, affects the, the students directly is the dichotomy between the HND and the BSc. Now, others like um, constitution of a national polytechnic commission, um, release of white paper, uh, funding of the educational sector, um, and infrastructures and lights. All these things are what the students benefit from directly. Because when we have good infrastructures, we directly benefit from it. When there's uh, a, an MPC, all um, uh, facilities and what have you, welfareism of students will be directly catered for. But now we have NUC, we have National University Commission, we have MBT, we have uh, NCC too for the College of Education. We don't have a polytechnic sector. And this polytechnic sector is the, the strongest, let me say, for technological wise. Any country that actually wants to develop technologically should cater for its polytechnic sector. That's, that's how, the major reason why. How long has uh, Yabatek been at home for? Uh, Yabatek has trained the strike since um, January. January this year? Yes. So that's seven months? Uh, February. February. Six, seven months. Yes. What, yeah. what about uh, Last Botek? We joined um, April. April this year? Yes. Okay. So how, how, are there any discussions that you guys know of that have been held between um, your lecturers and the government? Of course. We have a report from the ASOP that they have, they have met with the management on several occasions. But of course, uh, the government refused to give their commitment to all of the promises. And all we have is committee being set up to look at all of these issues. But is there room for implementation? And that is where the problem is now. The implementation of all of those committee's reports. You, you mentioned something earlier about you know the lack of a governing body for polytechnics. This has always been the case. Why did it take this long for people to talk about it? Well, I would um, I'll say there are a lot of uh, problems that we need to highlight. Um, you know, when the last time the academic staff union of university went on strike, yeah. I think a five month or six month strike, yeah. there was a lot of publicity even from the media houses. The, the media house also in this case did not help matters at all because there was little or no publicity on this issue still isn't you know at times when we when we, when we set out the streets for protest a peaceful one 
the news will not go beyond that day or the next day, which is unfair to us. And let's come to think of it. All these things that we're agitating for, all these things Asup is agitating for, all these things are the reason why we're on strike, there are things that are very, very essential. And if you ask me who is to be blamed, both of them are to be blamed. Because in an effective system, everybody has a role to play. The student has a role to play. The lecturer has a role to play. The, gov the government has a role to play. Everybody has a role to play. The government should just stop the long bureaucracy it engages in tackling issues. We are student union government uh, president officials right now. We know what it takes to run a government. So that's why I would not blame um, Mr. President or anybody right now on this show. But I would still say that as a leader, you need to be multitasking. You just don't need to concentrate on security or what have you. You need to set time to tackle all other departments, all other sectors. There's security, there's education, petroleum, and the likes. You need to, you know, give quotas to all of those things. Each time there's a, a committee to set up, you know, there's all this sense of, there's need for a sense of belonging. That, okay, what's happening to, to the committee that I set up? What's the report? Then implementation should set in. But all these things, there has been a long bureaucracy yeah. attached to it. I'm talking about the, the, the HND BSC dichotomy. I'm talking about the long bureaucracy attached to it. We're talking about government should respond quickly to issues. Okay, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to take a very quick break now. And um, when we come back, you didn't know that um, colleges of education are also at home, <laughs> part of this strike as well. We're going to be getting the angle on that. So please do stay with us.